socioeconomics. What is that? Yes. What, what's that's, that? That's what's socioeconomics? Negro oh, word, you hear. Yeah. That is not an uh, ordinary <laughs> Negro word. You're absolutely right. But we're all affected by it. We are all affected by it. Um, but before we get into what exactly it is, I think we got a coon alert for the week. Already? Do we got a, yeah, we got a coon, got a coon alert, alert for the week. We got one. The coon that never ceases. Right, yeah, right we got one. Yeah. Right off the bat. We got a coon alert. Yeah, All right, let me talk. Coon alert. 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 Say what? Go ahead, officer. Pull up the video. Who, what coon do we have this week? And I'm pretty sure on this show, we're going to see more than just one coon. So, I want to just give a little preface of what we're getting ready to watch here. Um, Look at the heading. This is actually uh, it's going to be a good segue into what social economics is. Uh, because when you watch this video, you're going to see the effects of social economics and how it damages uh, an oppressed people. All right. Look at the heading. Black woman disowned her black mother because the color of her skin. Now, right. where they do that? In Coonland. In Coonland. Yeah. Coonland. They, 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 they tend to town. do things in Negro Town. In Negro Town. <laughs> disowned wow. by the. Uh, play this video. I can already admit. Go ahead and roll that make, make it through this one. Johnson, I take it your relatives. Yes, yes. You're suing each other. Uh, no, Miss Johnson is suing your mother for six hundred dollars. Yes, I am, Your Honor. Why are you bringing your mother to court? Your Honor, this woman has made my life a living. You know what? I'm suing her today for this $600. woman. Yes, this woman. Referring to the defendant, Miss Annie Johnson, the one who gave birth to you. Yes. That's why you refer to her. Yes, this woman. Well, I tell you what, you won't refer to her like that anymore in this court. Okay, well, I'll refer to her as Miss Johnson if that's yeah. okay with you. It's fine with me, but not this woman, baby. We don't play that here. She deserves much more respect than that. Whether you realize it or not, she does. Okay, go on. Now you're going to refer to her as Miss Johnson since you don't want to say mom. No, I can't call her mom. I don't feel connected to her. All right. Tell me a story. She showed up to my job in a place that she has no place to be in, making a whole ruckus, and pretty much got me sent home on the day that I make the most amount of money, and now I lost $600. But not only that, I lost my life, the life that I have been creating for myself since I left her. I've been trying to get away from her ever since I was younger. Growing up with a mother like her is not easy. Why? Look at her. We don't look anything alike. Nothing. I don't even know. Okay, stop. You told me to look at her. I'm going to look at her. Now look at you. Yeah, look at her. You don't look anything alike. No. Why? Why do you say that? She has that dark skin. Ooh. Lord, help me. Jesus, help me. Okay, she has that dark skin. So, so what? What do you have? I have light skin. And so mothers and daughters and families don't come in different shades? Oh yeah, that's great. But I realized growing up that people with that kind of skin has it a little bit harder. And you know, I worked really hard just to keep my life as easy as possible. Okay, you need to hurry up and explain yourself to me. Your Honor. Growing up with a dark mother was so embarrassing. All of my friends were white. Yeah. Everybody was white. Hey, what did you grow up? I can't even hear no more. White. What did you grow up? Pause, 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 pause. All her friends were white. All her friends did not look like her because she don't look white. I don't know what she thinks that she has a, a white persona. When the minute that video come, uh, came on, can you not tell that was a black girl? She's trying to separate from her mama, who's a black woman, thinking she's something else. Nah. The woman behind her in the video, you can tell she's a white woman. But the one on the screen right there, come on. 
sister, your features are black. Your, fa your, your skin ain't that light as you think it is. Our people are just brain gone, mentally out of there. Keep on, keep on playing the video. Uh, I want to say something. This, this is why this topic is so important because it's the way the, you know, the the mindset of this sister. That's a that's a influenced attitude right there. That that's not something that somebody grows up with. And this type of behavior is pushed through social media. Right. And it's pushed. That's why we call the title social economics. Social economics is not just something just taught out of a book you just go through in, in school. This stuff is influenced through the radio, the music that we hear, through the television. When when young women like this, they grow up and they see these white characters with long blonde hair. They try to imitate that, and they hate everybody that looks the opposite of that. This is why when you look at this sister, the scripture says that. A man may be known by his looks. You can look at this sister and tell she envies her oppressor. Right. Yep, she exactly. chooses her enemy's ways. Exactly. Look at her hair. She say, you know, I don't look nothing like my mother. And she start flipping her hair and everything. It, she tries to imitate her oppressor. This is why this is an excellent topic to deal with social economics. Because our people are heavily influenced. And they hate themselves because they want to look like they're oppressive. You know, as the video plays, you're going to see uh, how young she is. She said her life is easy. She has yet to begun to live her life. She doesn't understand um, uh, what's in store for her. She truly doesn't understand who her oppressor is. But yet she's trying to, uh, as you say, she's trying to imitate her oppressor. Go ahead and roll that. Alabama. And what? How old are you? Your Honor, I'm 25 years old. So what part of Alabama did you grow up in that all your friends were white? Birmingham. In Birmingham. And you're 25 years old. Yeah. Which means that that was in, what, 1990-something you were born? 1990. And all your friends were white? Yes. So if you grew up in Birmingham, Alabama, and all your friends were white, you didn't grow up with your mother? She was barely around. She she was busy cleaning up after white people. Ooh. I didn't want to live that poor life. Mrs. Johnson, when this child of yours was born... Hey, uh, can we here. stop it right there real quick? I want to read a scripture real quick. I just want to read a scripture. You can't take much of that. Because us being um, repentant Israelites, uh, coming into this truth, and even for you, you all that may not keep the commandments and understand, this is what the scripture says about a child that is disobedient or unthankful towards their parents. All right. Plain and simple. Because when you when you when you look into a household structure, which when you look in the black, Hispanic and Native American Indian uh, community, the Israelite community, our home structure is destroyed because of the result of slavery here in America that we serve throughout the whole world. So when we when it comes to the structure of a household, we we lack the 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 need of respect. Or being thankful for what God gave us in our communities, in our households, all right? So read this real quick. Second Timothy chapter 2, I mean chapter 3, verse 2. It is not of God's laws to be disrespectful towards your family, towards your parents. Let me see this real quick. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 2. Read that. The book of Second Timothy chapter 3. Actually, read verse 1. Read verse 1. Second Timothy chapter three, verse one. Uh -huh. This know also. So know this also. Be well advised. Read that in the last days. You got to understand and realize that right here in America, you see the events that's going on in this world right now. We are living purely in the last days. We are in the last days. Only in the last days where you have to tell another man what God really called him, what his true nationality is. Only in these last days will you find sodomy in the land. And it's it and it's and it's normal. It's the norm for a man and a man to be together, a woman and a woman to be together in marriage, which is not a marriage. Only in the last days will you find a brother killing another brother over drugs, over cars, simple things like this. Read on. In the last days, read on. In the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous times shall come. Read. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. That's what you see in these rap industries. Men lovers of their own selves. What he can do. How much money he got. Ha ha ha. How much this NBA star, this NFL star got on his household. Read on. 
Covetous. Uh huh. Covetousness. Posters. So covetous means lovers of money. They do anything for money. And here in America, we understand as a people that we do everything. Basically, our, uh, the, the the celebrities of our people do anything for money. Holly Berry, uh, what? Uh, uh. Jamie Foxx, all these entertainers, they do anything for the love of money. Read on, read on. Posters, proud, blasphemers. Posters, proud, blasphemers, read. Disobedient to parents. What? Disobedient to parents. This, oh, what you see right here is a sister being disobedient to her parents. She hates the whole, the own skin that she's that she lives in. Yeah. She hates her own skin. What's good? She's boasting. Anything you read in the scripture is what she's doing. Exactly. She's boasting. She's proud. Yes. She's money hungry. Right. Because she's trying to go in the so-called white man's world, trying to change her identity. This scripture is for her. We're in the last days. Remember when you was growing up, no matter how much bad you did, you never disrespect your, your parents like that. Right. Never would you come home and just whatever. I don't care about you. I hate you and all the other stuff like that. You you still have some kind of respect or fear of your parents. Mm-hmm. This woman right here needed to get, you know what she need. <laughs> so we we trying to show y'all this here on the radio um, on the Lions Den radio show so that you all can realize this is the effect of basically wanting to obtain the American dream. This is what happens to you in a nutshell. You forget your people, you forsake your heritage, you forsake everything about what makes you, and you go off into another man's understanding or heritage and doctrine. And that's not the actions of the people of the Bible. Because you'll read about our forefathers, how they always remembered their people, even when they were in a so-called high social status. They always remembered their forefathers. They always remembered and did right for their people. All right? So um, read, the, read the, um, the end of this verse real quick. Disobedient uh, to parents. Right? Unthankful. She's very unthankful. And what is that in a nutshell? Read. Unholy. And it's not of God. It's unholy. That's it on that. Y'all can keep going. Hey, I want to bring uh, something out right quick, officer. Just to back up the point that you made, uh, uh, officer, if you can get uh, Ephesians 6, uh, 1 through 3. Because, you know, too many times, and, and, and this is why we we bring this knowledge out, based on, on the way that the Most High set this up, that we're supposed to go out and give warning to our people. Uh, we have too many of our people that look, for acceptance and through through the enemy. If right. the enemy does not say that we are worth something, we don't see any worth in ourselves. If we can't get any glory through our enemies, then we feel like there's we're worthless. We have nothing to offer. This woman is specifically pointing out the physical differences. She has not made any reference to how hard her mother worked, the things that her mother might have suffered. She has absolutely cut herself off from any kind of of empathy as to what did my mother suffer so that I could have a life. Hey, look, when you look at the video, she was around all the little white kids in the neighborhood because her mother was trying to make a way for them. Exactly. How unthankful is that? Exactly. The only reason why you could even be who you are today is because of your mother. Exactly. So we always have to remember to come back to the Bible. Go, but let's go to that scripture you had. Officer. I'm sorry. Ephesians chapter 6, uh, start at 1, 1 through 3. The book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. This is the first thing that she's missing out on. Because if she was obeying her parent, her mother, she wouldn't be speaking out against her mother. Understand what we're looking at. Because of a color difference, this woman took her mother to court. You understand that? She took her mother to court. <laughs> that's crazy. That's, that's, that's madness. Crazy. Perilous time. Perilous Read time. on. <laughs> Verse 2. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. What's that promise? Read on. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. That thou mayest live long on the earth. And I tell you what, she don't understand. If she wants to be in Esau's society, she's going to be reminded by Esau very soon who he is. Oh, yeah. This video shows, I don't know if we get to this video, but this video shows that. Keep going. What were you living? 
We were living in Alabama, Your Honor, and I was um, cleaning houses for a living, Your Honor, and so we uh, ended up living with different white families as I had my job there. So that's why she said all her friends were white? Yes, ma'am. And she went to schools, she went to school in the area of the families, I mean, the families that you lived and worked for, she went to school there? Yes, ma'am. And do yes, you realize and understand why you were able to do that? Yes, because she was poor and uneducated. And so I had to live a life of struggling. And like I said, I tried, once I got away from her, I tried my best not to live that kind of life. So how did you get away from her? I earned a enough money to get away from her, and I started dating this white guy who, whose family had a lot of money. At what age? 16. And then you changed your life? I mean, you changed your identity? Yes, I went to something? college. I got an education, All something right. that she does not have. You don't see and it. Is that her fault that she doesn't have an issue? Yes. What? She's her own woman. I'm not her mother. You said you went to college? Yes. You sound like an ignorant fool. Doesn't matter. That's exactly what she is. You don't sound like a college oh, stop, educated stop, woman. Stop, stop. She told the judge <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> as proudly as she's speaking against her mother. So she goes and tries to date a. Oh, a uh, so-called white boy. Who she thinks she fooling? She is not passing F off as a white girl. Not at all. If, I don't know if we can turn this video, but further on in the video, she explains how this guy, once he found out she was, uh, was black, put his hands on her. Because the mama came to her job, was trying, when you see why the mama was going to, to, to talk to her, you're going to be like, this woman needs to be Locked in a room somewhere and watch Roots for her rest of her life. For real. With her eyes taped open. With Deuteronomy 28 smacked to her forehead. This, this is beyond hey, It was wickedness. a scene of that when you uh, see the movie Undercover Brother. When he was trying to make his mind, they was trying to make his mind white. They made his eyes peeled open and made watch, watch a whole lot of white movies. That's, the, that's what she did a slave. Right I'm a star for yeah. the next 10 Everything. years. So go to, go to, um, go to 1340. We can't watch, we can't even uh, take this stomach this whole video. Get to the get to the this is gonna be the reason why her mother wanted to speak to her. 1340 in the video. Then we can move on, get into the topic. Not listening to your mom and hating her. She was born the way she was born. Did she have control over that? No way. Now, I understand from what I read, what your mother has to tell you is something very private. About her health. Is that right? That's right, Your Honor. And I don't know if you want to share it with the rest of the world. But I'm not so sure that she'll let you sit and talk to her. She got to say what she got to say now. Say it. I went to my doctor because I hadn't been feeling that well. And he took one look at me and saw that my color was different, that I didn't look good. And he asked me what had been going on. And so when I shared with him that I that I was so worn out and stressed out because I didn't have a relationship with my daughter. It's, my blood pressure was high. My, everything was going wrong. So the doctor ordered several tests for me and I, I took those tests, Your Honor. What's the diagnosis? And the diagnosis was, uh, was terminal, Your Honor. And I needed to that's why I was at the club, Your Honor, so I could talk to my daughter and I could share with her and I could tell her what was going on with me because I wanted to be able to, I wanted to be able to say goodbye to her before it was too late. I wanted to let her know that I loved her. I wanted her to know that I forgave her for all the hurtful things that she said to me, Your Honor. I love you, baby. You're always going to be my baby. I don't care what has gone on before it. Yeah, so that's why I was there. Why are you trying to get her fired? Why are you crying? I'm not crying. <laughs> What's your feeling? I don't know. You don't know. Judge Legal leaves for I stopped. And still had too much pride to admit she had some feeling for her mama. Right. That's a shame. And that's that's read. That's, you read. We need the Bible for this. Let's just read one more scripture. Or real Bring quick, it or out. Whoever y'all want to come over. Um, yeah, that's a, de that's a demon out. right yeah. there. For real. That's a demon. That's that is. Yeah, that's. I'm gonna let you go ahead. I don't want to. <laughs> you, you feel so bad for the black mama that worked her life trying to support this 
demon seed child she has, and she going to treat her like this. Right. Yes, we need some comfort of the scriptures right now. <laughs> hey, she's so consumed in Esau's system, his whole format, the vibration that Esau got going on. She can't even realize her own emotions and natural feelings of having some type of sympathy towards her mother, some type of sorrow towards her own mother that she came out of. Let's read the scripture real quick. Uh, Sirach chapter 7, verse uh, 27 real quick. Just something to remember pertaining to this situation, how we have to honor our, for our forefathers, our foremothers, even in these scriptures and in our own lives today. All right, read this real quick. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 7, verse 27. Uh -huh. Honor thy father. Do what? Honor thy father. The way you honor your father, the way you honor your mother, and that's one of the most basic things in the Ten Commandments. Honor thy mother and thy father. You honor your mother and your father by doing what they should be teaching you, which is God's commandments. You continue in the ways that your mother and your father raised you in. Train up a child in the way he should go. Right? Read on. Honor thy father. Read. With thy whole heart. With everything that's in your mind, your body, your soul. Your life is to honor your parents that raised you right. Read on. And forget not the sorrows of thy mother. Right here in the instance, the sister forgot the sorrows of her mother. Right in y'all face just now. She said, no, I don't know why I'm crying. Your body's telling you your mother is at sorrow right now. I don't know why I'm crying. I don't know. Read on. Verse 28. Remember that thou was begotten of them. Remember that thou was begotten of them. Look, the Bible said in a nutshell, remember where you came from. Remember your people. Remember where you came from. That's what affects our people a lot today. Because when we bring out the history of Deuteronomy 28, verse 68, about our heritage, they say, no, that happened already. Don't worry about that. Don't remember that. that that's in the past. Read on. And how canst thou recompense them the things that they have done for thee? And how can you measure the things that they've done for you? All right. That's it on that. But go ahead. Uh, just dealing with, again, going back with this topic, we have a couple of things we want to read here. Uh, the Bible being the first source, of course. That's right. Uh, but just dealing with this whole social um, economic topic, uh, the root word in it being social, uh, going to the word sociology, right? Going back to what you said, her, her whole thought press being influenced by another culture, another race of people, so-called white people. Because she wants that economic Edom, status. Esau, yeah. Esau, I do me. I do me. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm going to read this real quick. This is a uh, read the psychology book here. Um, this is a uh, social influence and conformity and compliance and obedience. It says uh, in this passage, it says there are many forms of social influence. People can influence others to follow along with their own actions or thoughts to agree to do something, even when the person might prefer to do otherwise or to be obedient to authorities. The mere presence of others can even influence the way people perform tasks successfully or unsuccessfully. Successfully. She has been influenced by uh, the white media. That's why she can't even understand her own emotions because she's Still in the thought of, no, this woman is darker than me, regardless of the fact she's my mother. No, she's darker than me. I can't yeah. feel sorry for what she's doing. She's her own woman. I am who I am, and she who she is who she is. I look up to white people. This is my skin complexion, and that's her skin complexion. Disregarding her own feelings, just so she can live and look like other, another race. This is why this topic is like this right here. All praises to the Most High. We go into this uh, topic. We pray that people learn something from it and understanding that what we watch on TV and what they influence in our in our um, in our in sitcoms, it affects us. Exactly. It really does. It, yep. it plays a major role. The mental on brainwashing the of our children. Mental brainwashing of our of our people. Colin Kaepernick is a free agent in the NFL, and while he is right now focusing on bringing a relief to a, to a famine stricken Somalia, no NFL team uh, has even signed him yet after he got out of his contract with San Francisco 49ers. Well, guess what? Donald Trump decided to weigh in on this. So last night, this is what he said okay. at his rally in Louisville, Kentucky. Your San Francisco quarterback, I'm sure nobody ever heard of him.
I'm just supporting the news. There was an article today. I love to report the news, and then they said I made a mistake, right? I said, no, the people reporting the news made a mistake if it's wrong. But there was an article today, it was reported, that NFL owners don't want to pick him up because they don't want to get a nasty tweet from Donald Trump. Do you believe that? I just saw that. I just saw that. Okay, now what he's talking about, Bleacher Report did a story saying that 70% one executive said that 70% of the NFL look, executives uh, hate... Hey, look, I want y'all to realize and understand. We have to be living in the, in, in the time, in the end times for real. How, let me see if I can put this together real quick. How is it that one of the most important men in the earth, on the earth, most powerful men in the earth, supposedly, right? Has uh he has the access codes to the bombs? He can say he can make sanctions to make stop people exporting importing. This man is <sighs> he can I don't know demonize anybody off of a a basic app called Tweet. I don't know if I'm Twitter. I don't know if I'm saying this right, but this world gotta be coming to an end. Well, where the where the thoughts behind one man could be addressed to one group to another. Off of a tweet, off of a tweet, like a little, like a little sixteen-year-old girl or something like that. I've never seen it as long as I've been alive where a president goes on a a, a teenage a teenage uh, daggone app and I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm saying this right, but are you saying it right? I'm saying, I, 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 <laughs> I don't know if I'm saying it right. What has this world come to? Seriously, y'all don't realize what time period we're living in. That's it on that. It's just. It bottles me, man. Basically, you need to get a life. He worried about. Yes. He's worried about. It's crazy. NFL quarterback. He's supposed to be running this country. Well, he's gonna run into the ground anyway. So yeah, keep on doing what he's doing. Cause the bomb's gonna blow. The bomb is gonna blow. He come out lying. He come out. The first thing come out of his mouth was a lie. Colin Kaepernick because he chose to take a knee last year during the playing of the national anthem. Now Kaepernick announced that uh, in the next coming upcoming season he will no longer take a knee. He said because he his point of uh, speaking out against social injustice, the point was received. Now also Donald Trump had the audacity to say, "Oh, no one heard of him, so why were they going?" Which means they've heard of him. Two, who had the highest selling jersey in the NFL last year? Kaepernick sounds like somebody heard of Colin Kaepernick. But the reality is this here. The NFL is shameful. What the NFL actually is saying is, oh, how dare you black man decide to take a stand on an issue? Now, if you have beat your woman, oh, we'll sign you in a minute. Uh -huh. If you have done cocaine, we'll sign you in a minute. If you were alcoholic or a drunk and you ran over somebody, no problem. We'll excuse that. We'll sign you in a minute. But because you dare to actually exercise the First Amendment, oh, we're going to penalize you. And also, those 70% of NFL execs uh, who will not sign Colin Kaepernick, how many of them have said a word about police brutality? How many of them have said a word when it comes to our prison industrial complex? How many of them have done what Colin Kaepernick has done and that has given a million dollars to various organizations who are out here fighting for those social justice? How many of these same NFL owners and executives have raised money trying to deal with the famine in Somalia? Today, I want to have Colin Kaepernick on the show. Okay. Uh, <laughs> where you gonna start? Where, where you wanna start with that? Hey, you you know what? He did. He he, he said, said a lot. A he said you can do a lot of dirt, but you better not stand up for your people. You better not speak about right. oppression. Right. Mm. So you do everything, but don't do that. This is the reason why for this topic. You defend your people. You, you are you pretty much an enemy of the state. They burned his brother's jerseys and everything. They and it's not like the brother just like he just can't play football anymore. It's not right. like he just 
He's sorry now. He just a young brother, not been injured. He took the knee. <laughs> because his people were being oppressed. Like, okay. Who I mean, is that a problem? My people are being oppressed. I don't I'm not happy with it. I'm not I'm not um salute the flag. I don't feel like this country cares for my people. Okay. Well, since he wanna do that, y'all burn his jerseys. <laughs> Nobody watches this game. Nobody signs this man. Yep. You see how much power they have over the social media? Since he wanted to stand up for the oppressed people, let's oppress him. And he's gonna get he's gonna know how it feels to be just like those people he was standing up against. Yep. I feel father yep. sorry for the brother's job hit putting out this on him on the news. So look at how it goes back and reverts back to what we just read in the definition of socioeconomics that Donald Trump clearly said. Yeah. None of I'm gonna make it plain. None of my peers, you know, the other rich Edomites that own you so-called mm. blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans running around the field, none of them want to get a tweet from me saying, "Now I thought we already discussed this matter." Right. We we discussed this at the round table. <laughs> what are y'all doing? What are y'all doing? <laughs> I, said, I feel sorry for this brother here. If he ain't been coming at it, they gonna come at him. And, and you know what else that's saying on another level? We have equally talented Negroes that are not conscious enough to stand up for their people, that are willing to take his spot. Exactly. The hey, buddy, <laughs> Go ahead. But even with him, though, I got a deal with Kaepernick on this. The brother stood up for his people, oppressed people, right? What did Moses do? Did Mo when Moses stood up for his people, did Moses stop and say, okay, Pharaoh, you know what the Israelites, the word is out now, okay, cool, I'm done. Moses said, no, nah, not until my people was free and get what I want, am I going to stop. Pull that video up. Pull the video up with Kevin. Hey, hey, hold on. Before we pull the video up, let's get that little bit of history yeah, that yeah, you bring it up. Bring it up. It goes go with, the thing is, yeah. we got to stand up as Israelites, and we can't buckle when our money's on the line. Right. Pull the video up with the Daily News. Uh, let's get Hebrews real quick. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23. Let's bring it out in the scriptures, and then we'll show the video, all right? Yes, let's, let's, right, right. This is basically the mindset of uh, Brother brother Kaepernick, right? That's how you say his name? Yeah. Yeah. This was his mindset, because he ain't sleep. He sees the effects that's going on with the Black Lives Matter movement, even before then. Look, this is how you know that we're in a social, uh, uh, basically a different type of social group or whatever you want to call it, is because this man that rules, y'all know who I'm talking about, Edom, Esau, I do me Edom, he's on top. So if you go outside of the thought where he sets out throughout the whole world, you're an enemy of the state. This brother ain't no terrorist. He's a citizen. He ain't talking about jihad, jihad, or nothing like that. He's a citizen. He's just a football player. But if you go outside of the mindset of America, you are, you are demonized as an enemy. Pretty much social media is a form of another is slavery. Yes. Pretty much putting you in this box. And all y'all have to think like this. If you think any other, you're not getting airtime. Your shows are not getting the proper views. And I bet the half of the shows that we put out, like that, like the, the real, uh, you know, you have these, uh, these black television shows. Mm -hmm. I bet we get way more views than we think. That they're actually showing us. Right. We're supposed to be way farther than what they're actually giving us. Like, and, and this proof of that is because the scripture says they have made no account of our labors. They don't want to see that we are actually making an impact on the people that, like the Bill Cosby show. They don't. They they fear us waking up, so they put all of these other things out there, like uh, everybody hates Chris. Yeah. The Proud family. The daughter is loud. That's old Raven. She always look at. It's every. Every other episode, she's a new boy in school. Right? The yeah. Cleveland show, it, it, you know, somebody, it, it's just, they want this defiled character about us, and they can't see us no other way. You, Ephraim in the same character. Probably remember that uh, Ephraim, my brother, he was always loud. He was always laughing loud. I ain't gonna laugh. How he gonna laugh? They just, they just give us these doggone demonized characters. Hey, that's why they say, too, it's a Negroes, slavery. Yeah, Negroes, that's all y'all do is eat chicken. It's because that's the message they put out there. But everybody eat chicken. It's good. <laughs> and guess what? And when they do that, it's called. It, it, it's also uh, so called um, uh, group conformity. 
Once a certain group thinks one way, you'll feel out of character if you don't associate yourself yes. with that group. You Assimilate. feel like you, 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 you're, right. you're ostracized. You feel like you're not a part of the group. And then you, it turns into self-hatred. So you, you join with that group and you think the way they think. It's called group conformity. But what you going, going back to what you said, like all Negroes like to eat chicken, we adapt to those stereotypes. Uh -huh. <laughs> what was the what 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 evidence of that? What what evidence do we have of that? Ludacris. Remember back when I used to listen to that garbage? Yeah. What album did he come out with? Chicken, chicken and something. Beer. Chicken, chicken and, and beer. <laughs> That's the stereotype they put out there. We feel like we have to adapt to it. Right. It's slavery. It's social slavery. Book of Revelation said. The three frogs, social media, religion, and politics. That's the three frogs that came out of this dragon's mouth. Social media is what we're dealing with. Social economics. This is mental slavery. That's what it is. And this is the result of stepping out of that mental slavery right. box. Exactly. Uh, uh, what's the sister name? She talked about it in the song. What's the, I'll get out of the box. What's the sister? Uh, uh, Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that song, she talked about it. This little box y'all put us in. But she said, I'll get out. She was trapped in the box. And what happened to her? She well, got they, locked they, they up. Took she her yeah, back. Locked up. She, she spoke against stuff. She, no more career. That's a good one. That's hey, a good one. She's trying to get out, but she can't. She's still in that hypnosis. <laughs> the brother spoke for every so-called black and Hispanic and Native American Indian when he wrote that movie. Get out. He spoke for everybody. All right. So let's let's read the scripture real quick. Let's get an example of our forefather Moses of the tribe of Levi. Of you so-called Haitians. Because he wasn't a Haitian. That's and you all are not Haitians. He was a Levite of the nation of Israel. So let's read this real quick. Moses was a black man. Let's see what black man did. Just like this brother right here. Uh, uh, what's his name? How you say his name? Kaepernick. Kaepernick. Go ahead. Read that. The book. Uh, yeah. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 23. Read that. The book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born was hid three months of his parents right. because they saw he was a proper child. Hey, look, because just like how they try to demonize and destroy the black man in America, they did the same thing back here in our past, all right? You got to understand that when you are Israelite, you brothers are a threat to this earth. That's why you have to fit in this, so in this certain, in this special uh, criteria of America. You are a threat. Look, when Christ was born, why did it trouble the land when, when the, the son of God was born? Because they knew that things was going to change on earth. Oh, yeah. Look, it said in the scriptures, when you read in Matthews, everybody was troubled. They was troubled because of a little black boy. <laughs> because of a little brother. The Messiah was here. Because the Messiah was here. You brothers are a threat here on earth. Because you can make things happen righteously. That's why. Read on. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. No, 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 no. Hold on. Because they saw... Because they saw he was a proper child. Right. He was a proper, he was a beautiful child, a good child. Read. And they were not afraid of the king's commandments. They wasn't afraid. The, the day that wasn't afraid was the midwives. All right. Read on. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He refused to be called an Egyptian. Like how's right, likewise with today. We we right now, we looking at y'all right, we have American citizenship. But our nationality, we are the Israelites. God called us that. Read on. Choosing rather to suffer affliction. So this is exactly what Brother Kaepernick is going through right here. Because he choosing rather to what? Read. Suffer affliction. He choose rather to suffer and be on part with the same affliction that his people are going through. Then what? With the people of God. And what else? With the people of God, meaning us, the Israelites, his own people who he guided out of Egypt through the Red Sea. All right. With the power of the Most High, we have that same power now. When we when we come together as one nation, we can fight. We'll be strong. Read. Then to enjoy the pleasures of sin. Then for, to, right. Read that. Read that again. Then to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Then to enjoy this temporary so-called American dream. You understand? Now read on. This is this is because this is what's gonna happen. The next verse is what's gonna happen to all those that seek to do right for their own people. Bring it up. Read on. Verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. Read. Greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. It's greater riches for you to stick with your people in the faith of Christ as Israelites. It's greater riches than that. The Most High calls that 
value. That's what the treasure is that you're supposed to have. All right. And it says for what? For for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. OK, so read verse 26 one more time. Esteeming the reproach of Christ uh -huh. greater than the treasures in Egypt. The mindset of the mindset of uh, of Moses back then was, look, there's a there's a blessing in the assembly of my own people. When I forsake Egypt, when we forsake America, there's a blessing when we come together. When the Most High guides us right, when the Most High guided Moses right, there was going to be an inheritance of land that we was going to get our own country. And that's the mindset of this brother is that he sees the afflictions of his people and he's trying to fight because it's wrong. It's wrong. That's how we got to come together. Like the scripture says, um, Zephaniah, get that real quick. Let me touch back on what you just said. Zephaniah chapter 2. This is why the scripture states this. Um, because, read, read this real quick and I'll and I say what I have to say. Zephaniah 2 and 1. The book of Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Who was God talking to? He was talking to the Israelites. So-called blacks and Hispanics and Native American Indians. He said, gather yourselves together. Read on. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desired. We're not desired by anyone else. So we can't expect them to understand and think the way we think. Like, why is he bowing down? They don't get it. Like, they, they don't understand it. They don't understand our oppression. They take it for a joke. Even when you look at the example of Pharaoh and, and Moses. Moses went up to Pharaoh and said, yeah, we need to get up out of here. We need to go into the wilderness. We need to pray to our God and keep the feast unto him. Pharaoh was like, what? What for? Why don't you just do that in the land? You can do that right here. No, we need to get up out of here. Moses, get out of my face. They don't understand our oppression. They don't understand it. And every time they start Pharaoh just sending them off, they don't see slavery. They just see, what, what, what are y'all complaining for? You got food stamp. You got Section 8. <laughs> you have your cars. You have your gold. Trump said you that. You got your Air Force Ones. What do you want? <laughs> what do you, you, you got your Jordans? You saw he the mic didn't say that. Yep. What are you complaining for? Yep. Go ahead. He said, "What do you have to lose? Y'all got I'm gonna say the nutshell because he didn't want to say it in front of everybody. Bo, he was like, "Y'all got chicken. You got BET. You got <laughs> you got, got the you got the Jordan shoes, the beer. You got the clubs on Friday night. Like, what do you have to lose? That's all he was saying. Just try me, and I'm gonna make it better for you." Like Say I what? Well, to the law, that was terrible. To the law, engineer. What's up with that yeehaw, man? I was just I don't know what that was. Um, Threw but whole thought off. But nonetheless, nonetheless, like Brother Kaepernick and like Moses, he saw that there was a, a type of oppression amongst our people, and that needed to change. That needed to be a change to come. Shalom, brothers and shalom, sisters. I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. As many of you are finding out, Christianity has destroyed our people. For the past 400 years, we have been indoctrinated in lies. Those lies of Christianity have not benefited our people in the least bit. Many of you know this. So, like Christ said in John chapter 3, verse 3, he said, Except ye be born again, you shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So in order to inherit the kingdom of heaven which shall be established on earth, you must be born again. What does that mean? Many of you always quote that, but you don't understand what that means. When you go to 2nd Ezra, chapter 14, verse 34, Ezra said, Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding, meaning subdue all that you have learned here in Babylon the Great, it says, and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive. What does that mean? Meaning you must be taught all over again, taught your nationality, taught why it is that we as a people went into slavery here in America. Who are we? What is the mystery of why this country, these nations have changed our nationality? We here at Israel United in Christ, we have classes seven days a week, three times a day, all for what? For your learning, for your edification. You will learn things never taught to you before. You will learn history. You will learn prophecy. And more importantly, you will learn the dynamics of what you need today to survive as a people. One third of Israel is prophesied to repent of their sins and come into this truth. So now we need you, brothers.
brothers and sisters, come join us here at IsraelUnite.org. Go to our online classes and register. This is for you. This is for the redemption of the 12 tribes of Israel, brothers and sisters. I hope you understand that. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6 says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent. And brothers and sisters, we are not keeping silence. So come join us. Help, help us build this truth. Donate to us so that we can keep this truth on and on. Push it forward. Help us get this gospel out. Because Christ said, when this gospel is taught throughout the earth, then shall the end come. So with that, brothers and sisters, we say shalom.